President this morning on North Korea. We do know the Vice President and National Security Advisor H.R. McMaster are heading to New Jersey to meet with the President over lunch today. Let's talk about the big picture here. Former CIA operative Mike Baker is with us. Also back with us, Will Ripley and Barbara Starr. So Mike, to you, this is, as Will pointed out, something like he's never seen before. This is a very technically detailed plan um, for missiles that they're threatening. The appropriate response in your mind from the administration is? Well, I mean, we have to operate on several levels. It's not we have to do this or we have to do that. And by that I mean, look, we've already had a, a fairly successful effort in the U.N., right? So we had 15 to 0 on the U.S. drafted resolution. Now we have to implement those sanctions. And then we also have to monitor. If China tries to circumvent the sanctions as they have in the past, we need to be aggressive in calling them out. So we have to do that. We also have to work simultaneously at the same time off the radar screen. It's not going to be some public display with the Chinese authorities to aggressively explain and, and work with them so that they understand that this is one of those rare moments where their uh, interests align with ours. Mm -hmm. and, and to, and to wa work with them to understand that this can either happen in a very bad way, mm -hmm. and nobody wants that, that's, that's obvious, or they can work with us to try to affect a resolution. And whether that resolution ultimately is uh, that the Chinese work to effect a regime change um, or uh, unification, whatever it may be, and that all sounds grand, but the Chinese are going to have to be at the table. And I think they've signaled a, a mindset change by the fact that they signed on to that UN resolution. But Kim will not go for a regime change. Well, no, of I mean, course as, not. As, and, and that's not going to be, the, you know, it, but again, we have to realize Kim is not a loved figure within the North Korean military. If Kim left tomorrow, if Kim was gone tomorrow, it's not as if the military there would be in mourning. So I think we have to, and we also have to understand they're operating in a bit of a bubble. Do you, I don't think anybody believes that the military is giving him honest assessments of the North Korean capabilities compared to the That's U.S. capabilities. Will Ripley, I mean, you've spent, you've been to Pyongyang more than a dozen times. You've spoken with high up officials there. Do you agree with Mike Baker's assessment? I'm not sure that I would say, uh, <clears throat> look, at least the way it's publicly expressed, uh, you ask any member of the military and they will say that they will die for Kim Jong-un. Now, granted, he is the leader of an authoritarian regime where political dissent is not tolerated and people who are deemed to be unloyal are punished severely or even killed. Uh, however, uh, the mil so, so every military member that I've ever spoken with inside the country as recently as a month and a half ago has said that they are ready to fight on his orders and he is the commander of the Korean People's Army, the supreme commander. Um, uh, but I do think that we need to, we really need to watch uh, over the coming weeks and here's why. August is always a tense month in this part of the world because August is when the United States and South Korea engage in their joint military drills and those are expected to kick off uh, later this month. Um, it always infuriates Pyongyang, and frankly, it also angers uh, the, the officials here in Beijing. Uh, the Chinese government doesn't like to see these military exercises either. Um, and so if North Korea w did feel confident that they could pull off something like this, the month of August might be a time when they would, when they would try it, because North Korea often launches missiles and tries to show force during this time. Sure. But what we don't know is now that President Trump has drawn this red line, how the United States is going to respond. Yeah. Right, right, we don't. Barbara Starr, to you, we've learned that the president's uh, choice of words, fire and fury, unlike the world has ever seen before, was improvised. It was essentially ad-libbed. Now, the White House is, is taking pains to say we're all on the same page. General Kelly, not surprised at all to hear this. However, can you just speak to us about whether it is rare for a president to, to make remarks like that off the cuff or when they're speaking about a situation like this, when previous presidents have cleared that with those around them in the national security apparatus? Well, you know, it's, it's uh, rare until it happens, right? Uh, sure. There's always been a case of a president speaking extemporaneously, I suspect, and giving his staff a heart attack uh, by doing that. What, what I think we're dealing with here is, in fact, you know, take the White House at, it were, as it, at its word that the president was speaking extemporaneously. He wanted to deliver a message. He wanted to deliver a very tough message. It's what's happened after that that's so interesting. You saw the Secretary of State saying, sleep well at night. You saw the Secretary of Defense warning that if North Korea were to initiate an attack, uh, there would be dire consequences for them to pay the destruction of the regime 
even as Secretary Mattis also made the point about the diplomatic track and supporting that diplomatic track. So it's, it is nuanced. This is, it's what, I think it's what Mike went back to a minute ago. None of this is uh, one path or the other. There are several things happening at once. There's no indication that the Trump administration is turning away from diplomacy, but they are ratcheting up the rhetoric, trying to make sure that Kim hears them. What he hears in Pyongyang may be the big problem. And I, and I think it's, that's a really important point. Also, I think what China hears, and I think more to the point, the, this, any messages that are delivered, whether they're extemporaneous or they're scripted, uh, it's more important how China processes it at this point. Uh, because we, we, we tend to look at, um, they've, they've for years now looked at uh, North Korea as an enabling you know, a, a situation. So what they've done with North Korea has served their own interests, meaning the Chinese interests. And I think that they are at a point where they're realizing now they've kind of come to a point in the road where that may be right. changing. Right. And to be clear, um, diplomatic language, uh, restrained talk, um, sort of a pseudo appeasement carrot and stick has approach worked? hasn't worked no, and it's gotten I mean, us to clear. this point. We have to leave it there. Thank sure. you, Mike Baker, Will Ripley, Barbara Starr, as always. Thank you all very much. Ahead for us is.